Welcome to another episode of Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. Today, our very special guest is Peter Vallone, Jr., who is a councilman and also the chair of the Public Safety Committee. Councilman, welcome to Reaching Out. Thanks for having me, Greg. Your constituents consist of Astoria, parts of Jackson Heights, and the surrounding communities. This is a family tradition for you. Your dad was, of course, Peter Vallone, who was the speaker of the city council. And uh, prior to that, you were, prior to becoming a councilman, I believe you were assistant district attorney. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you made that transition and what made you following your dad's footsteps by becoming a councilman. Well, he's, he's got some pretty big footsteps. And uh, growing up, I, I was not planning on entering public service. I always wanted to be a cop, um, and I kind of combined that with law and became a prosecutor for six years right here in Manhattan. Um, had, a, had a very good trial record, and, and I loved it. I was, uh, most people thought I'd leave after three years because that was the commitment. But I, I joined it because I wanted to do it. Stayed there for six years until um, I, I got married and a kid was on the way, and I was making less than 50 grand at the time after six years. I mean, prosecutors are really underpaid, so I had to leave. Went into private practice uh, for 10 years, um, and then finally my father decided to run for mayor in 2001. And uh, that's when I decided to take a serious look at this because, you know, I, I got to watch him. I got to watch my grandfather, Charles J. Vallone, for a little bit. Um, and I just got, got to see how they really got, were able to make a difference um, just by getting involved, um, especially my father. I mean, he did it for 27 years. And um, no one has a bad word to say about him, unlike me. <laughs> I'm only doing it 10 years now, and I'm, I'm pretty controversial. So apparently I haven't learned um, all that well. But they taught me that there's nothing nobler than public service, you know, what I do or what you do. Um, and uh, I just love doing it. I love my job. I love the fact that um, I'm, the, I'm the lowest level elected official right now, closest to the people. I walk around the streets, yes. talk to them, get ideas from them, go to every school in the morning that I can and speak at career days and read alouds. And then I get to go to City Hall, write the laws in the greatest city in the world. And, and I've written a bunch. Um, and uh, then come back to my district and, and work on someone who might be being uh, thrown out of their house or something like that. Uh, where, where else can you do this all day long? I walk in my, in my office in the morning. I say, who are we going to help today? It's just an awesome job, and I hope to keep doing it. Now, it's appropriate that you're the chair of the uh, Public Safety Committee because of your background and your love for law enforcement. Uh, tell us about your duties as the chair of that committee. Um, I'm very proud to be uh, chair of public safety. I was from the, the second I was uh, I was elected, and my, my colleagues elected me public safety chair. So for 10 years now, I've been working very closely with Ray Kelly. Um, to make sure that we continue to win the war on crime and terrorism. And we've been very successful. And in my job, we have oversight capabilities, and we have maybe two hearings a month on all sorts of different topics. We've had so many on anti-terror and things like that. Stop and Frisk has been very uh, controversial. So we've had a lot of uh, oversight hearings on these things. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we're very lucky to have Ray Kelly. I think he's probably one of the world's foremost experts in public safety. And um, I work with him as much as possible. I'm a, I'm a supporter of his. Of course, I've disagreed on certain things. Um, but um, uh, so what, what we do is we, f we the, the uh, criminal legislation goes through my committee. Um, and we've, again, passed a bunch of that, especially on graffiti. Um, and we do oversight and we do budget. And Mary Kelly will be in this month again um, to discuss the police budget. One of the problems I've had with the administration is the fact that they've allowed the police force to dwindle from 41,000. We had 41,000 cops in I 2001. Yes. And now we're down to a little over 34,000. And uh, it's mm -hmm. all done without one cut to the police department. And what they do is they just don't replace the ones who are yes. trading out. We lose about 2,000 a year, and they replace them with about 1,000. Right. And they say we haven't cut one police officer. Um, the other thing they've been doing is cutting civilians. Now, I stood on the steps with DC 37 twice in the last two weeks, um, and we were arguing for civilianization. One of the quickest ways to get cops back on the street is to get them out from behind the desks. Um, we've got at least 500 cops. Those are the cops that Ray Kelly even admits are doing work that they should not be doing behind desks. They could easily be out on the streets right. if we had a civilian to replace them. The civilians don't make as much. Um, they're trained to do this. Um, and uh, we can get those civilians in there and get those cops right back on the street because, as, as you and your members know, crime is starting to tick up again. And it, we haven't yeah. seen that in 10 years. And one of the big reasons for that is um, is the fact that we just don't have the cops on the street uh, that we used to. We used to see bike cops. Remember the bike cops used to sure, ride around? We used to yes. beat cops. Uh, yes. Don't see that anymore. So especially in Manhattan. 
Manhattan, sometimes you right. see it, but not in the outer boroughs, not at all. Uh, and, and you and I just stood together recently um, uh, at a shooting in Astoria. We rarely have shootings in Astoria, but now we've had two in the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah. And it's and the same not only in the rest shootings, of the city. Uh, people were killed. Yeah, yeah a yeah. young man was yeah. killed. Um, and you and I stood there, mm -hmm. and, and it was a 19-year-old who shot a 21-year-old. Uh, the 19-year-old obviously had a gun, but so did the 21-year-old. Um, and just last week, a, um, a diplomat's wife walking down the street, shot in the neck. Thank God uh, she's okay. Uh, but she had kids uh, a couple blocks from my house. I spent my whole life in Astoria. Um, these are things are happening throughout the city now, and it's because well, one of the main reasons is that we just don't have enough cops. So, um, again, the budget hearing is this month. Um, they're n they aren't planning on increasing the force at all. They hopefully are going to maintain it. That's what they've been saying, although they haven't maintained it. And I don't think we can go any lower than we are now. You're listening to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. Our very special guest is Peter Vallone, Jr., Councilman. He's also the chair of the Public Safety Committee. Our members are school safety agents, and we have approximately 5,200 school safety agents, and you've been very supportive of them in the past. Uh, can you give us uh, your views regarding violence in the schools? Uh, your members are doing an excellent job. I've, I have two, I like to say little girls, but now they're 18 and 16, and they went to, to public schools. Um, and I am just, you know, when I would drop them off in the morning, uh, just like every other parent, um, you know, you now have my precious little angel for, for eight hours at least and after school, maybe, maybe even more. And my number one priority is keeping them safe. I don't want, no parent wants to drop them off and think that something could happen to them. I mean, we'll talk about learning, but I want my kids safe for, for, for that time. And that's what you guys do. And I have been a huge supporter of yours, especially when other people, you know, are complaining that there are too, there's too much security in our schools. I don't think they can be. I mean, I keep saying, well, if you have too many agents in your schools, send them to mine. I'll, I'll take them because I, I think you guys do a great job. Um, we worked uh, together on reforming the School Safety Act so that it, it's basically just got some statistics to the city council so that we can do oversight on what's actually happening in our schools. Because as you know, with the police department, sometimes it's a little difficult to get statistics. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, I passed bills on getting statistics about crime in parks, about crime in schools, the School Safety Act, um, the uh, um, uh, yeah, stop and frisk statistics, you name it. We, it's very difficult to get it, but we've passed laws to get these things from the police department. Um, so we can do some proper oversight over crime in schools. And it's doing better. Crime in schools is going down as it is you know, throughout the city. And that's in large part because of, uh, because of the work of your members. And I just um, want to commend you, and, and I'm here to work with you if, you if you guys ever need it. Thank you. Yeah. And we also uh, represent the, uh, a lot of employees in the New York City public housing, NYCHA, New York City Housing Authority. And there, I would say, in the last year, we've seen a spike in incidents of violence, gun violence. There's a major gun uh, violence problem in the public housing, and also there's a major gang problem in public housing that spills into the schools and all the communities, and it goes to the hospitals. So wherever you work in New York City, we're plagued with that gang violence. Uh, do you see anything on the horizon to try to address this problem? Because we seem to ignore it. Yeah, I don't, I don't unfortunately see it getting better uh, in the near future. Uh, th three different reasons. Uh, well, the, the main two reasons, number one, is the other cops that uh, we just don't have any, uh, enough. Um, and uh, the, one, the second reason is uh, Albany got rid of the Rockefeller drug laws, and, and I know that was uh, you know very controversial, but people really don't know what happened there. Um, they didn't reform them. They got rid of them, and that's putting drug dealers right back on the streets, and they're going right back into our public housing. They used to have to do some jail time, just eight months. It wasn't 15 years. That was a line. Eight months was the minimum. One year, and you do eight months. Yes. Um, so these drug dealers are going right back onto the street, right back into our projects, and that's finally starting to have an effect on, as you see with these shootings. Um, and, uh, you know, you and I stood together uh, a couple weeks ago when, yes. when the 19-year-old young man shot a 21-year-old man. Um, main thing we have to do, and this is something I support Bloomberg on, uh, is stop these illegal guns from getting to our streets. Um, and that's a federal problem. They're all coming from the same locations in Virginia, places like that. Um, and I've, I've got a bill in now calling on the federal government to close the, um, I used to call it the gun show loophole, but it's even worse. You, you, you can buy a gun at a gun show right now with no background check, but you can buy more guns are being sold on, on, on Craigslist. And you don't, yeah. you, you don't have to do any background check at all. So anybody can get these guns. In fact, the federal government just changed the law. It used to be you could buy one gun every 30 days. And then they decided, no, you can buy as many as you want. And, I mean, I don't think one gun every 30 days was too much of an imposition on gun owners right. to, to, to wait. Sure. So now you can buy as many as you want. And clearly they're going to buy as many as they can and then, and then send them up to New York City. 
Um, so he's been really working hard on a federal level to try to stop the illegal guns getting into New York. Um, and then once we, they get here, we got to get them. And that's where it becomes controversial because you can wait. You can wait until the, you know, the, the kid is shot. You can wait until uh, a 90-year-old uh, grandmother, Sadie, uh, Sadie Mitchell, is killed in her home in, in, uh, in, in Brooklyn watching TV by a drive-by. Uh, little Armando was shot in the shoulder in a deli, if you remember the videotape. Yes, I remember. Uh, you yeah. can wait till police officer Fugaski, now detective, gets shot in the face. Yes. or you can, and, and then try to find the videotape and go after that guy and say, bad shooter. Or you can get that gun off the street um, earlier than that by allowing police to do police work. You've been listening to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237. Our very special guest was Councilman Peter Vallone, Jr., Chair of the Public Safety Committee. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Thanks. 